was a few years ago now that The Last Jedi was released, and it's considered by many to be the most divisive Star Wars movie in history. I myself have only done two short videos on it in the past, so I figured it was long overdue for me to talk about it some more. Now I happen to be on more of a middle ground when it comes to this film. I consider it a bad movie, but it's far from the worst Star Wars movie there is. Force Awakens and Rise of Skywalker, both of which relied way too heavily on nostalgia, both make The Last Jedi look good by comparison. And there's absolutely no denying that TL LJ presented some very interesting ideas to its audience. It's time for the Jedi to end. The greatest teacher failure is good guys, bad guys, made up words. And let's not all forget about Force Skype, Force Projection, Ray's parents being nobodies, this scene and this one, which I still can't decide whether I love or hate. And there's so many things I find hugely impactful even to this day. I still cry over Paige's death scene, laugh at the image of Luke throwing away his lightsaber, and feel enraptured while watching Ben and Rey slowly start to connect, only for Kylo to betray their established trust not once, but twice. Now obviously the movie does have some glaring issues, and before I talk about what they are, I'd like to address some of the more nonsensical complaints with The Last Jedi. As we all know, the fandom menace loves to claim that TLJ had some sort of man-hating feminist agenda, which is utterly ridiculous considering half the female leads in this movie are complete idiots. There was nothing to suggest that Haldo was afraid of there being a mole on the ship, and even if that was the case, all she had to do was assure Poe that yes, she had a plan, rather than getting in his face and openly provoking him. She didn't even have to tell him what the plan was, just that she had one. And if he still kept pushing after that, then she could deal with him however she saw fit. I fail to understand why she felt the need to talk down to someone who was simply expressing concern over the ship's passengers. Yeah, Poe's a hothead, but as a leader placed in such a seemingly hopeless situation, it was Haldo's job to de-escalate and keep people calm, and she didn't do that. Now as for Rose... <laughs> Why would you stop me? I saved you. That's how we're gonna win. Not fighting what we hate. Saving what we love. What do you think Finn was doing, you idiot? Oh yeah, and then there's Phasma, who was so forgettable she almost completely slipped my mind. At the end of Force Awakens, she gets tossed in the trash, and at the end of this movie, she dies. Wow, a feminist icon if ever I saw one. And then to top it all off, we have Rey, otherwise known as the infamous Mayor Rey Sue, who, despite having grown up on an isolated desert planet, knows how to swim and translate Wookiee. And that's not even addressing the magically overpowered BS that she pulls in the other two films. Remember the scene in Force Awakens where Rey reacts to seeing all the trees on Takodana? That was a good reaction, very true to character. And then in TLJ, she goes to an island surrounded by water, and this somehow evokes no response from her. And generally learning another language is very difficult, so you would need a valid reason to learn it in the first place. So unless Rey was frequently interacting with Wookiees on Jakku, she would have had no reason and no way of learning their language. And in order for her to be able to translate as flawlessly as she did in TLJ, she would have needed a teacher, and considering she was a loner, 
Who would have taken the time to teach her? And the thing is, even if Disney hadn't intended their female leads to come off this way, it still doesn't support the idea that they were pushing an agenda. Because the movie does at least try to put its male and female leads on equal footing. The theme of failure extends to all parties. Holdo's plan ultimately failed and Revels died on her watch. Both Finn and Rose failed to stop the First Order from tracking the Rebels. Phasma failed at life. Rey's failures may be surface level, but obviously Disney thought they counted. And the male leads are all given opportunity to grow and excel. Poe becomes a better leader and helps the rebellion live on. Finn finds a cause worth dying for until Rose comes and screws it up. Kylo was the one to rescue Rey and kill Snoke. And Luke? Well, let's talk about Luke. Another somewhat baseless complaint for this movie was that it made Luke's character completely unrecognizable. But upon closer inspection, I found many of Luke's key scenes in TLJ to be strongly reminiscent of certain scenes in Return of the Jedi. Seriously, just look at a comparison of these two scenes. I look inside, and it was beyond what I ever imagined. Sister, so you have a twin sister. If you will not turn to the dark side, then perhaps she will. He would bring destruction and pain and death and the end of everything I love because of what he will become. And for the briefest moment of pure instinct, I thought I could stop it. <laughs> Passed like a fleeting shadow, and I was left with shame. They're very nearly identical. Same goes for The Last Jedi's finale. Just like in Return of the Jedi, Luke is showing compassion to his enemy and choosing to resolve conflict through non-violence. And he's simultaneously saving the rebellion and trolling the whole of the First Order. Seriously, how badass is that? It's pretty much the perfect send-off for Luke. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there aren't still problems with his character. The weird back and forth he does, talking about how the Jedi need to end one moment and then showing a clear reverence for Master Yoda and the Jedi texts in the next, makes the character feel very disjointed. And even despite the moments where the old Luke shines through, the rest of the time this new Luke comes across as cowardly and even cruel. It's a complicated issue that would unfortunately take up more time than I'm willing to give it right now. Rest assured I'll address it more thoroughly in future, but for now, let's get down to one of the biggest issues with this film, namely the subplot. The whole expedition to Canto Bight was unabashedly just filler, and it accomplished absolutely nothing for the story. Yes, it provided some interesting concepts which helped feed into the theme of the movie that not everything is black and white, a theme which, in my opinion, was completely wasted in the climax. When Kylo was reduced from a complex, compelling character to a cartoonish, overgrown, angry child. <laughs> Between this film and The Force Awakens, it seems like Ren just devolves into a whiny, temperamental adolescence every time Rey defies his expectations. <laughs> Anyway, there was one more scene I wanted to talk about, and I couldn't figure out whether or not to put it in the pros or the cons of TLJ, since it manages to be both good and bad at the same time. The scene I'm referring to is the throne room fight in the wake of Snoke's death. This is easily the high point of the movie, serving as an excellent payoff that, like the rest of the movie, is visually stunning. But upon closer inspection, you can see how poorly thought out this fight really was. Watch his two weapons. And now he has one. 
Where did his other weapon go? It literally disappeared. Look at this. Where are you swinging? This guy has a completely clear shot of Kylo's head and torso because for some reason Kylo just stuck his lightsaber in the ground and the guard chooses to go low and just hit his saber in the ground. He literally has a clear shot to the head. There's no way he can mess this up. So let's see what he does. It's a uh, swing and a miss. He hit his friend. I, I don't get it. Why on earth are either force users not using the force? Something's wrapped around your lightsaber. Why don't you just try turning it off and then on again? Meanwhile, this one guard willingly throws his weapon away so Kylo can run him through. If you want to see Michael J's full breakdown, you can find the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like, and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for all future content. I'm your alibi, and I will see you next time.